Well, welcome. This is the Know Your Numbers podcast. Here's your host, Chris McCormack. Today's guest is Chris Freeman out there in uh, the Portland, Oregon market. Um, I assume it's it's probably maybe rainy and cloudy out there, but but he might be able to tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, Chris, excited to have you on the show. If you would, just give a quick introduction and a little bit about yourself for, for those that yeah. want to <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Chris. Well, I really appreciate you having me. And yeah, it is maybe a little bit cloudy, a little bit rainy here. Um, or, you know, it's pretty standard for this time of year. Uh, yeah, so I'm Chris Freeman, and I live in Portland, Oregon. And uh, I've been, uh, I'm a real estate investor, mm -hmm. and uh, but I'm also working in high tech sales and sales leadership. I've been doing that for 26 plus years. And while doing that, I've also been uh, just individually investing in multifamily real estate here in Oregon and uh, did that for about 20 years. And over the last uh, you know, three to five years, it started to work on expanding and diversifying outside of the state. Mm -hmm. And so has have started to ramp up that business with a couple of partners, um, you know, doing larger deals and syndicating deals and raising capital along the way. And so in support of that, I've, uh, you know, I have a brand at a business called High Tech mm -hmm. Freedom Capital, and I have a podcast called High Tech Freedom. And it's really just, you know, business that brings together uh, the real estate and uh, the capital raising that goes along with the real estate and tying that in with my, you know, pretty big network of high tech sales professionals that I've worked with, worked alongside of, or maybe even managed over, over many years. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I got to say, I did not give you a, uh, a great introduction by just putting Portland, Oregon out there. You do quite a bit and uh, you host the podcast, you invest in real estate. And uh, if, I know anything about you that you are quite the sales professional. So um, I honor you for all that. Uh, I'd love to just jump right into to some of your um, sales techniques. Um, I believe that, and I often say this, that everybody is in the sales world. Um, if you're an employee, you're selling yourself. If you're a business owner, you're selling your services. Uh, what is your take on that, Chris? And and what what do you have to say about the people that that get uh, a little bit of a bad feeling when they hear salesman or somebody who sells something. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you're right. I mean, everybody is, uh, you know, everybody needs to be selling something. It doesn't matter if you traditionally have the sales rep title. Mm -hmm. um, you could be working in a business and you're going to, you know, it, everything in business today is, is collaborative, revolves right. some amount of, involves some amount of teamwork. And uh, if you have an idea or an opinion or a certain direction that a project or an initiative or something should go, um, you've got to sell that idea. And a big part of selling is, you know, getting people on board with your idea, understanding where the other people are coming from and understanding, you know, what's driving the way they think, you know, maybe they have a certain goal or a certain thing that's really important to them that may not actually be that project. It might be something else. And if you can help figure that out and take some time to stop, listen, and understand, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you can help them achieve that something else uh, and show them that you know, while your idea uh, for this project might be different than their idea, it actually will help get them what they ultimately are looking for, which may have nothing to do with the project specifically. Um, you know, the salespeople that get a bad rap, they're probably not very good salespeople. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> No, that's good. Um, and I think that's becoming more clear, but but some people still get a bad feeling about, I mean, even entrepreneurship, I find that that some people think, oh, you're an entrepreneur, you must be greedy, you must be going after all the wealth or, or the money or um, you name it. So um, this tends to be a topic of conversation within the Know Your Numbers community, the podcast. Um, what is your thought on wealth building and the entrepreneurial journey um making money and and trying to do it on your own versus working the nine to five and and relying on other people yeah yeah well so i do both yeah um, you know I, I i work in a w2 and you know I'm okay an, an entrepreneur and building up my real estate investments and building that business you know along on the side and been doing that for a while and um yeah you know, first of all i think there's for me there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money yeah. Um, personally, I, I, uh, you know, I still drive. All our cars are paid for. We drive real basic cars. I drive. A, I bought the the absolute cheapest, mm -hmm. no frills uh, Chrysler Pacifica when it first came out, hey. and I bought it the <laughs> like the second to the last day of the year and got an incredible deal on it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, my, my son's high school friends, you know, they'll, they'll make fun of me <laughs> when I'm driving the minivan. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, cause for me, it's that, you know, the making the money is not about all of the, all of the toys. It's just, right. it's, it's really a way to enable some of the other stuff that's important to me. So maybe I want to up level my, my children's education, or maybe mm-hmm. I want to, um, be able to, um, take an extra vacation or maybe give back in some way. Yeah. Um, but I don't even, you know, most of time, I don't even think about the money making piece. I think about the journey of making the money, you know, the yeah. building, the something, building the business, building the podcast, making connections and building relationships. Um, you know, and that ultimately, when you're focused on that, that'll lead to more wealth right. and more money making, but you do have to be careful to focus on just the wealth piece because, you know, what, what is that number? I mean, yeah. why does that number even matter? Yeah. Right. No, that's so good. And that's something that I, uh, I have come to learn and often talk about is I refer to it as they're not being a finish line. And every time you go on a goal setting uh, journey, it's kind of, it's more about who you become. And if you're not in it for the journey, then you'll probably burn out or um, lose your greater purpose. Um, yeah, one just- thing Go ahead. Just say, it's funny because I just I had just wrote this quote down because I just had picked it up in a book. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, the rich dad, poor dad yep. books. Right. So yep. there's a version that's uh, for doctors, why uh, why doctors don't get rich. Huh. And the quote was, and this is right in line with what you're saying, but the true purpose of a goal is not necessarily to reach it, but to become the person you need to be to hmm. reach that goal. Right. Um, so I just thought that was wow. kind of an interesting no, that's Way awesome. I love it. Saying. Yeah. And it's, it's like the journey, not the destination. It's who you become. Um, there's a lot of sayings out there, but I mean, if you're not willing to go through the journey, then um, you either won't last or maybe you'll get there. And what was it for? Because if you can't appreciate the journey, then, then what are you appreciating? Cause the number is just the number and it's always going to increase. Like you said, Chris. And um, one thing I like about your uh podcast and your style is um i think you start off every episode or maybe it was just a couple of the episodes is um you do kind of talk about making a lot of money so then you can reinvest and make more money so then you can get that lifestyle that you desire that the freedom to choose and and do certain things i'd love to hear chris what your um definition of of wealth would be or or your definitional definition of uh the freedom lifestyle is, yeah. is often thrown around there <laughs> yeah well so i had this theme that uh and i and i touch on it in every episode of the podcast and it really comes from my perspective of being a, a lifetime learner i've always been kind of mm-hmm. a self-development junkie and you know <laughs> one of my very first uh sales jobs was you know doing the cutco knives oh yeah and uh, I did that for all through college, ran offices, but, you know, in the early days, I mean, they just gave you tons of uh, motivational books. And back then it was tapes and Zig Ziglar and Brian mm-hmm. Tracy and, you know, that stuff, you know, kind of stuck with me and, you know, I liked it all. So I continued to, to read those types of things. And so um, I've always believed you need to always be learning. And so one of the themes of the podcast is you first need to learn from the best in order to earn like the best. Mm-hmm. And then once you've earned it, how do you take those hard-earned commission dollars and redeploy it in a way that creates additional income streams to ultimately help get you to that freedom that we're all looking for? And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of my um, you know listeners are in jobs where they can make a lot of money, yeah. high-tech sales. Right. But you know they're not doing it because they absolutely love it. Uh-huh. They're doing it because it can generate some income and they want that income because there's something else that they're ultimately striving for. Yeah. And so I... Uh, you know, so that's, to me, that's, you know, you've got to continue to reinvest to continue to grow. And, you know, that was all, even back when we were investing kind of into smaller multifamily assets here in my backyard, mm-hmm. we never took any cash flow out for 15 right. years, wow. left it in there, let it pile up, throw a little bit more and reinvest that into the next property, le- left that cash flow and let it pile up and just kept doing that. And, you know, it, that's compounding, right? And right. you're able to accelerate growth. And uh, so I'm real passionate about just helping people, especially my tech friends, um, kind of accelerate that path to whatever that freedom is that they're looking for. And for me, um, you know, it's just flexibility. It's, mm-hmm. it's ability to, I'm probably, I love working. I mean, I can't help it. I can't sit still. So <laughs> I'm probably still going to be 
working and active and doesn't mean that I, you know, freedom isn't sitting at the golf course or, or not doing anything, right. but it's the flexibility to do it where I want, when I want, if my kids decide to leave Oregon and go live in some other state, I can go get a long-term rental, hunker down for 30, 60 days, go see little, their little Johnny's soccer game yeah. or school plays and continue to work wherever I'm at. Wow. That's awesome, man. And, and I do uh, want to touch on the family aspect a little bit. Cause um, one thing when you were talking about, investing uh you i think you worded it as upgrading your child's education and so being the the and education junkie that you are um have you instilled that into your kids and um have you been able to to show them the importance of being a lifelong learner at, at such a young age and and uh looking to to level up or are they still on the learning process as, as we yeah, all are well, chris do, do you have any kids not not yet nope okay well you'll know how hard that is <laughs> yeah I, i've been um, a kid and i know i know <laughs> i know the trouble that we can give our parents so yeah so i, I would say the short answer is yeah you know it's work in progress and yeah. one of the things that i've learned um over the years so my kids are 16 and 18 is mm -hmm. that you cannot tell them stuff you yep. can't sit there and kind of preach and explain it and i've tried to give them every book that I thought was cool, you know, yeah. like a kid's version of uh, Think and Grow Rich or some something like that. And, you know, they roll their eyes and like, oh, dad. And so I spent <laughs> more effort over the last couple of years to try to to meet them at their level. Yeah. So, for example, I'm doing a thing now where I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll send them a daily text with one, you know, little short uh, quote or life lesson. Uh, Maybe it's yeah. a quote and then I'll give a little bit of explanation on why that matters. Um, or um, I'll, I'll try to get them involved in something I'm doing. So like with my podcast, I'll see if I can pull my daughter in and say, hey, do you want to help me maybe create a TikTok channel? And, and uh -huh. my point there is the best thing you can do with your children to kind of teach them that stuff is give them the hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, another quick example is I had my, my son uh, did a, you know, he saved up some money from picking up quarters and mowing lawns at properties and so on. So he did a thousand dollar investment in one of Grant Cardone's oh, yeah. um, wow. deals in Florida. And it was not so much, you know, I, I, I said, hey, look, here's your bank account. I don't know. Let's say there's three thousand dollars in there. Yeah. You've made 24 cents of interest over the last year. <laughs> Are you excited about that? He goes, well, I don't know. Should yeah. I? No, that's that's horrible. Right. I said, uh, <laughs> you know. Why don't you go put it into real estate? He's like, well, can I do one of your deals, Dad? I said, no, you're you're not big enough yet. Yeah. Um, but you know, he is he, able to to do you know that one thousand dollar investment, and it was more about um, doing that for the experience of it. Right. You know, he's got to go fill out the forms, read the documents, eventually get reports, yeah. and then maybe see that, huh? Wow, I'm doing better than my twenty four cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome, and I think that's the cool thing about um, oops, Grant Cardone is one, he's making that available to, to the little man, but also um, kind of like your take, he, he preaches the, the get people involved, get your kids involved. And so um, for you, Chris, that's, that's honorable. And um, I think that'll go a long way. Cause man, if I knew about the, uh, the benefits of real estate at, at age 18, I, I'd be in a lot different position, but uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be sure to, to keep an eye on your, your son and uh, hopefully connect with him too, to see where he goes. Cause I know, I know the benefit that can be compound interest in the education and the real estate world goes a long way. <laughs> Start early. Well, I think you're probably on a pretty good path right now. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, time will tell. But um, let's, uh, let's go into the real estate sector a little bit. Um, you said you've been at it for a little while now. Um, I'd love to hear, Chris, what drew you to that industry, um, out of all the investing opportunities, I mean, I know it's it's hot now and everybody's into it. It seems, mm -hmm. but um, for somebody that's been around for a little bit, like what what drew you to it? Was was it as easy as reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, or was it uh, a little more complex? <laughs> no, you know, I think a lot of times there's you know there's so many people out there that are promoting so many things, and you know, especially around real estate and. You know, you'll hear somebody that did really well, but usually what you don't hear is it didn't happen in six months. You know, the mm -hmm. reality is it probably took them a few years to yeah. to put in all this work to to get to a point to where maybe they did some great deal or maybe did a number of great deals. And so I do think that it's important for people that are that are if they're looking to get into this space, that they think about 
uh, or they understand that, hey, it's it's work, right? You yep. have to go put in a bunch of elbow grease to, to eventually build something great. And, you know, for me personally, I, I bought a duplex in 1999 and I was working in high tech and I was living in half of it. So kind of house hacking at the time. Yep. But, you know, I was so into the tech space and that was a really hot time um, uh, in, in the market. And so all of my personal investments was in technology stocks. And I had a 401k where you'd get more matching if you took it in the company stock. And so I did that. And then, you know, I had a pretty nice portfolio you know, for being 20 something. Yep. And then um, the dot-com bubble hit and that portfolio went down by 90%. A lot of those companies actually just went to zero. My 401k cratered and, you know, I had stock options and an ESPP that was basically worthless. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I looked at my duplex like, well, that did all right. And then I had met a partner, my future partner at that time, who had already been doing real estate for 40, 30, 30 to 40 years, maybe. Wow. And I was watching how his cash flow was just rolling in yeah. and his lifestyle didn't miss a beat. And I was like, you know, I want that. <laughs> so I just really, it's starting around 2000 one started to more diligently focus on just slowly investing in smaller multifamily assets. Mm -hmm. And in 2002, I set a goal that I wanted to acquire 300 units, have them fully paid off. And I felt that that would generate uh, more than enough income and freedom to do whatever we wanted to do and give back in any way we wanted to give back. And yeah, um, yeah we, so we, we got up to 110 doors here in Oregon. And then what I realized was, well, they don't have to all be paid off. It was more about, you know, a certain cash flow that I was ultimately ultimately looking for. So we've adjusted that along the way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really kind of how I got started. And, you know, then after about um, 15 years, I started to, I don't know, about 16 years, I started to look to expand outside of Oregon. Okay. All right. So, so you're doing that now. And uh, what markets are you looking at? Is it all around the U S or is it? No, just, the... just, no, just really the Southeast. There's four okay. States there where I have yep. a couple of partners that I'm working on and okay. uh, you know, we've got some prop, property management uh, that we work well with. We've got a, a, a local, one of our partners is a, you know, an asset manager that's based there in Raleigh. Um, mm -hmm. So pretty strong team yep. um, that gives us some good access to the deals and, you know, kind of a track record in that area. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I like the, uh, I mean, a lot of people like the, the Southeast market and I, I see why, I mean, everybody's moving there and it's uh warm sunny and you can't really complain about much so <laughs> yeah i think you're on to something there um well that's great man i i do um appreciate your time here oh actually there's another thing that i see on your linkedin profile and for any listeners out there go uh connect with chris on linkedin um and we'll get to some of his other contact stuff later on but um one thing that's in your in your banner there is that you're an outdoor enthusiast and uh this kind of goes along the freedom lifestyle. Um, but I'd love to hear Chris is how, how do you go about unplugging or slowing down as they say, because a lot of entrepreneurs and investors and, and workaholics for lack of a better word, have trouble with that. But as an outdoor enthusiast, I'm sure that you, you prioritize that a little bit. So I'd hear, I'd love to hear your strategy. <laughs> I do, you know, and, uh, it, it is hard. Um, yeah. so I love to golf. Uh, we ended okay. up buying a condo out on the Oregon coast and had a, bought a little membership there at a course that I can just walk to for my condo. So, uh, you know, I'll try to get out, maybe work remote and then get out after work and play some golf, love to fly fish. Mm. And I can tell you one thing that was a really big eye opener for me was I put myself in a, a volunteering position that involved a lot of outdoor stuff. So I ended up uh, becoming a scout master for my son's boy scout troop and did that for a number of years. And that was, uh, in a way, it sort of forced me to stop, slow yeah. down. A um, lot of outdoor camping, you know, it was just part of doing what I was doing. Um, but in a way, it, it sort of was forced relaxation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, great, I had to work because I was a leader. But, you know, once you get out there and you're camping and you're hiking and going on, you know, back multi-day backpacking trips, um, a lot of that I probably wouldn't have been able to go do if, uh, if, I, if I wasn't tied to some commitment. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit of a life hack, right? If you like it, you know, is there a way that you can sort of lock yourself into doing it by yeah. maybe volunteering or maybe being on a committee or a board of a ski resort if you really like to ski or, you know, or some club? Yep. Um, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Forced, uh, forced freedom, I guess, is is a good way of putting it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, that's good, man. I, I don't have too terribly much. I'd love to uh, 
kind of wrap this up. I mean, we've talked a little bit about goals and, and I know you're a big goal setter. It's um, true to your podcast and you've talked about it here, but uh, what are some of the, the yearly goals or what are some of the, the short-term goals in, in the life of Chris Freeman? And um, for anybody that struggles to, to set some goals, do you have any tips and tricks that help you along the way? Yeah, it's actually a great question. And so I, I, I released a podcast episode on goal setting and it was really uh, the theme about the uh, the topic of the podcast was really, hey, you know, now that we're in January, so this came out um, you know, a little while ago, um, maybe you need to reset your goals because maybe you're already kind of through the month of January. It's not quite going the way you thought. And so I talked a little bit about the importance of setting goals around things you can control, right? Too many times people, especially like salespeople, will set goals for a certain amount of revenue or a certain quota achievement. And that's all great, but that's not an activity that you can control. What you can control are the behaviors and the activities that could get you there. And if you do all of those and you hit it, great. If you do all those and you don't hit it, great. You did the things that you needed to do to get there. And so, yeah, I mean, I have aspirations for my real estate business as an example, but I can't control the number of units or you know how that scales. But what I can control is the number of podcasts. So I want to do 52 uh, High Tech Freedom podcasts this year. Yep. Awesome. And I want to be guest, uh, a guest on 52 podcasts like yours uh, um, to continue to get my brand out there to help promote the podcast. Yep. And so that's something that for me, that's measurable that I can control. So I highly recommend pick something you can own and control. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So what's been your um, strategy on getting on to other podcasts? Because I know we connected, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's uh, my network, right? There's yeah. lots of people that uh, are out there that, uh, especially in the real estate business that have podcasts, know people that have podcasts, have been yeah. on podcasts. And so, you know, I'm always asking mm -hmm. um, and looking around and, and just leveraging my network. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. I think that might be a, a goal for me in the future because I do a lot of a lot of the hosting, but it's also fun to be on the other side sometimes and and rapping for somebody else. <laughs> what, is, what is your goal for this year? Uh, um. Let's see. Uh, I do have a big income goal, um, but more on the controllable side. I have a couple um, ultra endurance races that I'm I'm looking to get get done. So uh, I have a marathon here in April, um, an ultra marathon in Colorado in August, and then uh, a half Ironman down in down in your neck of the woods, the southeastern neck of the woods uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina. So. If you're oh, out wow. there in October looking at properties, then uh, maybe we can connect. But <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, those are great goals. No, it's awesome. Um, well, Chris, man, I, I do appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, coming on here. There is one final question that we like to ask all our guests here on the Know Your Numbers podcast, and uh, that is, Chris Freeman, what is one truth about money that most people regard as myth? Yeah, I, I think maybe we already touched on it, but I, I think mm -hmm. that there's no number. You know, when people think about, you know, they need to get to a number, you'll be happy. Um, I, I don't think that, um, I think that's a myth, right? right? I think the happiness comes from, you know, so the money and the wealth is important, you know, and yeah. that it, it enables stuff, but the happiness is not what comes from it. So you got to find a way to be happy along the way. Yep. Um, I do believe there's a baseline of income that can create sort of that foundation of, of uh, enablement. Um, but, you know, that bigger number, more money, more wealth, yeah. isn't going to make you more happy. Um, you know, it's just going to enable some things. And so you right. still have to figure out from a mindset perspective, um, you know, how do you be happy? And, you know, how do you, how do you, you stay who you are, uh, no matter what that wealth or that income stream looks like? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And one, one recommendation I have for all the listeners out there is uh, become an outdoor enthusiast like our man, Chris Freeman here. Um, Chris, thank you again for your time. Any closing remarks? I'd love to uh, give you a plug if, if people are looking to reach out to you and get connected. How can they do so? Yeah, so I am just Chris Freeman on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. hit me up there. Uh, and uh, even if you're not a sales rep, please go check out the High Tech Freedom podcast. Yes, yes, go do that. Um, I've listened to a few episodes. It's very good. And I look forward to following along again here in the future. So thank you, Chris. Um, thank you. We'll talk soon. <laughs>